Oh, the spring doesn't have to do another one. Good. Okay. AC, you have a question? Oh, okay. Care of that? Yeah, thank you. The Joe, the Joe Brazel rule. <laughs> nah. Since you made the news, it's still going. Ooh, it's time to. It's time to go. Okay. Good evening, and welcome to the June nineteenth, twenty nineteen Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. At this time, I would request that everyone please turn off or mute all electronic devices, and please stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Applications for rezoning, rezonings held during tonight's meeting will be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission. The commission will then make a recommendation on the applications which will be submitted to the St. Charles County Council for their final decision. The individual items and bills for this evening's uh, applications are scheduled to be introduced on the Monday, July 8th, 2019 County Council meeting. Applications for preliminary subdivision plats heard during tonight's meeting will be, will be voted on by the Planning and Zoning Commission during the meeting. The vote on the preliminary plats is final. Only a recommendation for denial of a preliminary plat will be heard before the County Council. The following documents are introduced as a matter of record for this evening's public hearing and regular meeting of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Those documents are the Unified Development Ordinance of St. Charles County, including zoning maps, and the Year 2030 Master Plan for St. Charles County, which includes the Year 2030 Future Land Use Plan Map. I see that we have a quorum. Sure, we'll entertain a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor, sign aye. 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 Um, if anyone is here for the uh, Missouri, Bluffs. Missouri Bluffs project, that has been uh, taken off the agenda and has been re rescheduled for next month's meeting. July 7th. Uh, July 17th meeting, so that will not be presented at the meeting tonight. So, didn't want somebody to sit here and and, and wait. For, well, that will not be on the uh, uh, tonight's agenda. Um, how the meeting proceeds, um, I will read into the record uh, the application. Uh, we will ask staff for their report, uh, at which time the commission can ask questions of the staff. Uh, then we'll ask the applicant to come forward to present their application, uh, and if the commission has any questions at that time. Uh, and then we will open this up for a public hearing. Anyone wishing to uh, speak regarding the application uh, can come forward and speak. Uh, then we will close the public hearing, uh, ask the applicant to come back and uh, answer any questions that the commission may have and then the uh, commission will consider the application and take a vote. If you are going to speak this evening, we ask you fill out one of the little cards here on the, on the rail. Uh, we want to make sure we get your name, uh, address, et cetera, correct in, in our minutes. The first item on the agenda is a rezoning uh, request located at 1936 Duallo Road. Application number RZ19-05, the property owner is James, James W. Clemens and Jill Bryant Clemens Living Trust. The current zoning is A, Agricultural District. The requested zoning is R2-2.0 
two-family residential district. The 2030 master plan recommends low dis density residential, which is one to, four, one to four dwellings per acre. The area consists of 1.097 acres. The location is on the north side of Duallo Road, approximately 430 feet east of Charity Drive, adjacent to the city of Lake St. Louis, and is located in Council District 2. Staff. All right, uh, if we could look at the map. Could you add the map up? Thank you. Uh, this property, as I mentioned, is located uh, at the bend of the uh, Duello Road uh, as it continues north from <coughs> Highway N. Um, let me see if I have a better picture of it. The proposal for Duello Road is to continue on, some of this right of way has already been purchased, to continue on to the north and eventually fade back into Duello Road over to the west there. This property is located right at the corner of where that will be straightened. Uh, the right of way has already been purchased. Uh, the property is actually both of these parcels, the two, together they are 1.07 acres. And they are requesting the R2 zoning uh, and they do have a concept plan for that, uh, for that rezoning. Basically they would be putting in five uh, homes, four of them would be attached and the fifth one would be single family on its own. Uh, they are all still considered single family in that they each own the ground around them. If it was all one piece of ground, that would be multifamily, um, but they would each take care of their own yards and just have the zero side setback adjacent to the other home that they're attached to. Uh, staff did look at the property. As we mentioned, it is a very narrow piece of ground. It's approximately 100 feet wide. Uh, and then the length is in, is in the <coughs> north to south portion of the property. It's a little over 400 square, 400 linear feet north to south. Um, with the R2 zoning, there is a special kind of caveat, and I'm not sure that they plan to use this or not because we do not have a preliminary plat submitted to us. We only have this concept plan. But with the R2 zoning, um, we do have a, a portion of the development where it will allow a private street to go in with just a pavement width of 24 feet, and that would also include their right-of-way, their private right-of-way. Uh, the rest of it can be <coughs> devoted to the development of homes. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that, this, like I said, that this is going to be the plat that they will be submitting. The applicant could probably speak of this, but um, what you can see is something similar to that with a smaller cul-de-sac. It does have to end in a cul-de-sac when it's a private um, issue like that on R2 zoning. Uh, staff did recommend approval of this uh, request due to the use of the ground there. It is a, a good transition between the, uh, believe it, it's Windstone subdivision to the west, and then uh, the school, the elementary school, is there at the next corner. Um, they would have just the one entrance here at the northern portion of the property. And uh, um, it is a good, trans like I said, it is a good transition use of that piece of ground right there. Uh, with that, staff is recommending approval. Any questions for staff? Yes, um, how many residents do you say would be there? Five? There would be, uh, this concept plan shows five residences. So it's not in compliance with the master plan? It, it, it's in between, it's 1.07 acres after the right of way is taken out for the new Duello Road going by there. Uh, the master plan calls for the land use to be one to four units per acre. And so this, this is would 1.07? This, yes, it's yes, okay. it's it's in between. It's compatible. It's I, we're not saying that it recommends it. It is compatible with that use for this particular piece of ground. Okay, and again, you said the 
it would be a four family, which to me looks like multifamily. I, I, well, I understand that it's who owns the land. Okay, it's still going to be separate, but is it going to look like a four-family apartment? No, it, it would be no, no. They're attached homes. They're single-family attached, attached homes. Okay, is what they are. It's like Some people refer to them as duplexes. These, I don't like that word because that implies rentals and such. But uh, these are individually owned properties. Uh, their yard has to be at least 3,500 square feet for the attached homes, and then the single-family has to be the the usual 7,000 square feet minimum lot size. Are you familiar with the villas at Whitmore? Yeah. That, that's this concept. Okay. The, uh, the cul-de-sac, the turnaround that's on this concept plan, is that large enough for emergency vehicles? We are not to that point. This would not be a final preliminary plat. There, there may be issues that they would have to address with this plat before they present it to you and then during that review process, we will send it to the fire department for a review. Is that uh, road that goes across the back that uh, I guess uh, they're maybe calling a driveway, is that part of their lots? Or is that uh, separated out from the lot size? Because uh, it looks like it's maybe, what, 20 feet wide and then there's a couple of feet. So, I'm just trying to see how much they actually have as usable space for the, the property. Right, and again, this, this plat, we, we can't really, this, this is only to be used as a concept right at this time. Gotcha. Um, we don't have any measurements on that, we, you know, or anything. Um, if, if you zoom in, you can see that it does have a little bit of setback from the property line there, but um, they may adjust that, I don't know. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Seeing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. <coughs> Do you swear or affirm that you tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings on the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Lisa Johnson. I'm an attorney with Smith Amundsen. My address is 120 South Central Avenue, Suite 700. Uh, St. Louis 63105. Go ahead. Okay, we're here. I'm, I'm representing the applicant, James Clemens, today. And, um, <clears throat> yes. Okay. Um, this is our presentation. Uh, just an overview of the property. Some of this will be repetitive based on what staff already mentioned. But um, you can see where it's located in connection with Duella Road. Um, it's located at the corner uh, where it turns west. Um, uh, the current, hang on just a second. I think a slide's missing, so I'm going to back up. Um, you can see uh, where the yellow uh, highlighting is. Uh, that is where the Dweller Road will continue, and as a result of that continuance of Dweller Road North, to take out that uh, sharp turn to the west and then to the north. Um, that cut this piece of property down to just a, a narrow width of 100 feet. Um, so that is a very narrow piece of property there. And, uh, our client is trying to find some way of, of using that. Um, oh, I'm going backwards. I apologize. Okay. The current zoning is agricultural. Um, you can see the property located there where the red mark is. Um, it's near... Uh, it's primarily agricultural, but um, there is some residential there. Um, the current zoning, which is agricultural, requires um, five acres. This is 1.07 acres um, for development. Uh, the setbacks that are required are 50 feet on the front and 50 feet on the rear. So uh, with a depth of just 100 feet, you really couldn't build anything on there without the rezoning. In addition to that, um, uh, it requires a 150 feet wide lot, so even if you went down to the south on Duella Road, you don't have the width even for a frontage on that. So it really is not developable at all or usable for anything, uh, any building in agricultural. Uh, we do have the concept plan. It is, again, this is just a request for the rezoning uh, to the R2, um, and this is just a concept plan. The cul-de-sac, 
is uh, drawn on there and is planned so that uh, we would have a adequate turnaround for emergency vehicles. That's the reason for the turnaround at the end. Another safety concern that we are hoping to take care of is that by adding that drive in the rear, we're cutting down the number of entrances onto Duella Road there and creating a back entrance to the properties. Um, they are all, you can't really see it there, they are all on separate lots. So there are, you know, each half of those attached uh, residences are on a separate lot. There's five <coughs> lots there. Um, and we are working with staff to, um, you know, to create uh, the correct setbacks or at least figure out the, the best way to fit this onto the property. That one change that will be made on uh, the plan from where it is now is that there isn't quite um, the 25 feet in the front on against Duella Road, which would be a frontage, we believe. And so those uh, buildings would be moved back at least a few feet to accommodate that. And that's all I have if you have any questions. Any questions for the applicant? Uh, Lisa, do you know anything about the, the subdivision that's a kind of right, ne right next to it that doesn't have any houses on it yet? Um, if you want to bring you that mean across, map back up. Across no, across the... Because you got like three feet on your concept plan between those back lots. Right, those road. are single family residences in that, um, <clears throat> in that subdivision. Right. So how is this property not part of that subdivision? It's, was it owned separately, these each it's, one of these? It was owned separately, and then that was cut off when the uh, Dwell arose. So they owned this before? They and did own it, it before too. that happened, right? Okay. They didn't buy it in this condition. OK. It is Winston subdivision. Um, and this is one of the, I guess, let's see. I think I missed it. Oh, you can't see it on there. Um, anyway, this is, I'll show you here. Um, yeah. Here we are, and then uh, Dwell Elementary is proposed for down here is there, and then um, Windstone Subdivision is not only to the west of the property, it's also to the east of the property, mm -hmm. so it is right in the middle of that residential area. So when the new Dwell Road came through, the it was... I guess it went further to the, I guess, the north there or whatever, that it would would have been a wider lot? It would have been a wider lot. I'm not sure if he owned <coughs> that much the right of Duello Road extension, but um, it, it at least narrowed it when they took that roadway property. Yeah. Between it wasn't 100 feet wide at that point when he owned it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Acquired it. So there's going to be a turn, a left turn into into this development and then just a little further north there's another left turn into the bigger subdivision that's behind that's to the west of this if you continue I'm north, not sure am I going north that. or west you're going north okay if you go north on Duella Road you have your turn off there and then it seems like just fairly north of that you have a main turn off it goes into this other subdivision that's to the west of you mm -hmm. well there's it looks like this one right here this turn off right yeah, here yeah I see what you're talking about I'm not sure about that. It's a possibility. I know there is an entrance down on the old Duella Road that runs east-west. I was just wondering that if there subdivision. might be any, any turning lanes uh, thought about or? Uh, it is just going to be a narrow, prob a, probably a private drive because it will be located on the lots. That's kind of the plan that uh -huh. we're working with now with along with staff. And so um, it's, it's not gonna be a dedicated road. And so we really don't think it's going to be, I mean, it's not going to have traffic. It's not a through street. It's just those four. Traffic's small. probably going to be moving a little faster when they straighten Duello Road out, too. And, uh, it's, it'll be sort of right before a curve, I think, on that. Yeah. And I guess this is for staff. So we'll, if that road that Tom's referring to, what kind of distance would there have to be from between that if, and the driveway to if you meet can go site back to line the, improvements. If you can go back to the map that I have up. Um, Are you asking me? They're going to do in the back. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm measuring approximately 200 feet, just a little over 200 feet from intersection to intersection. It will be up to the county highway department to issue a driveway permit, and they will be in, in the review process when a preliminary plot is presented to us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for the applicant? 
a quick one for staff on uh, in R2 looking at lot five isn't there a side yard setback that they have to deal with or or not they would and it would have to be a 7,000 square foot lot so uh, th again there's issues that would have to be addressed on the preliminary plat and okay. adjusted yeah this you is can't build right up to the property line <laughs> <clears throat> right we like yeah, I said this is a concept somehow. plan and we are working on figuring out exactly how to make that comply okay any other questions seeing none thank you thank you we will now open the public hearing for uh, application RZ 19-05 rezoning request for 1936 Duello Road anyone here wishing to speak regarding this application You solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Arnie C. A. C. Dinoff, public advocate and resident. Uh, my mailing address is P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon 63366. I'm opposed to this zoning change, and I'm opposed because of the density issue. As what was stated by staff, uh, for the record, uh, only one to four dwellings per acre. Now, there's some discrepancy that I'd like to bring to the attention of the commission and the public record. Staff states that the acreage that we're talking about is 1.097 acres, but yet the applicant just testified that the actual acreage is 1.07. So it's even a smaller lot. Now, in R2, it says you can put a maximum of four dwellings for the lot, but yet she wants to put five dwellings. So we need to lower the footprint. That's number one, and that's why I'm opposed to the rezoning of this in its uh, form. Um, it's too dense. Um, number one, the right-of-way, New Dweller Road, I want to make sure that we work an agreement out with this property owner so there's no additional cost to taxpayers or to the county. The second issue is density. The five homes should be reduced down to four homes, which was the maximum allowed by our comprehensive plan and by R2 zoning. Um, if they want to go for a variance, this is not the proper board. The proper board for a variance would be the Board of Adjustment to see if they qualify for a hardship under the state statute of what a hardship means, which would mean that they'd have to prove a hardship beyond a reasonable doubt. Number three, I have some concerns with the private road of only 24 feet. I have problems with first, first responders, a ladder truck getting in there properly to service those homes, and ambulance service. And finally, I don't see any letters on file from the uh, Wentzville Fire Protection District, from the Wentzville School District, which is bursting at the seams to see if they can take on additional students at Dwell Elementary, which I understand is at capacity. Uh, I also don't see a letter from Public Water District Number Two or a letter on file from Public or uh, Duckett Creek Sanitary District. For those reasons, I'm opposed to this because of the density issue. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Denoff? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak during this public hearing? Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing and we'll ask the applicant to come back. Anyone have any further questions for the applicant? No. Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. We'll bring this back to the commission for discussion. I, uh, <clears throat> it pains me to say this, but uh, I think the density may be a little bit too intense also. Um, if we <coughs> apply our own master plan to it, they should, the lot should be 1.25 to do it mm -hmm. to, to accommodate the five, the, the five lots um, I, it, putting it you know if we're going to have standards then we, we should we should have standards and that's you know that's what a master plan does so I think it's I think the lot is too small for for five uh, dwellings I think four fits and I think four still makes it a a very viable project um, I think it, it gets too crowded with that single family house, um, single family home down there with the, with the cul-de-sac. Any other 
Comments, questions of staff? So what? Yeah, I, I mean, I hadn't uh, thought of it quite the way Mike was saying, but I think I mean, it's, it's just, I think it's just like economically it still brings a good return to back to the gas. property with four sites and they five, have a little five, uh, five, five smaller density. Yeah. I think that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, or change it to four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Anyone else? If not, the chair will entertain a motion to approve application number RZ-19-05. I, I've got, I'm sorry, oh. one quick question just occurred to me. If <coughs> if this is denied, can they bring it back with, with four proposed homes instead of five, or do they need to wait a certain amount of time? Well, I, again, they are not asking for a preliminary plat to be approved. We don't know if they can fit five homes on there. They're only asking for rezoning mm -hmm. to R2 right. so that they can try and uh, do attached homes and have the more narrow street. Good point. But, uh, and so we could, we could tell them they can't do five dwellings on it at the time the plenary plaque comes before us then. But if they present that to you and you guys say it's okay to bring it before us, we'd have to change the preliminary plaque then? Well, let me, if I may, let me go back to your question specifically, Mr. Klinghammer. You asked um, <coughs> would they have to wait to come back. So this would be a recommendation of the county council. If the county council uh, approved it and there would be R2 zoning and then they would have to abide by the R2 zoning regulations in terms of the minimum lot size and the maximum density, et cetera. But if it were denied, uh, if they'd have to wait a year in order to present the exact same thing in terms of the exact same zoning yeah, district. Yeah. Yeah. If they uh, came back with a different zoning district, they wouldn't have to wait a year. Okay. I'm all right. I'm just so everybody knows that I'm all okay with the explanation that we heard tonight. Yeah. Um, I just, I don't like the the number of, of proposed so homes So with the R2, with with the uh, zoning, would it allow that or who would make that determination? Would it be uh, how many units? Well, um, we haven't made a determination yet whether f four or five would fit. Um, I think five is somewhat crowded in terms of setbacks, minimum lot size, et cetera. Right. So it would be pushing it. Uh, but I guess part I, of it is just I misinterpreted what, what Ellie was saying then when she thought it was in the in the um, allowable yeah. or in the in the gap. Yeah. Um, well, I did say it was recommended. I said it was compatible. It's okay. borderline. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So all that we would be voting on is the rezoning. Okay. Not right. the gotcha. uh, this the uh, our vote has no bearing on this concept. Right. 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 Okay. I'm, I'm so, clear. Okay. Then I make a recommendation that we uh, go forward with the vote on this to you make the motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second it. Second. Miss Sally, how do you vote? Yes. Uh, Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. And I vote yes. Rezoning passes. You can convey our thoughts to the to your client. Thank you. Uh, next on the, is the agenda is rezoning request uh, RZ19-06. Uh, the owners are uh, Daniel Louders, uh, Sydney Krupa. I'm uh, sorry if I pronounce that, pronounce that wrong. And uh, Audrey Bryant, existing zoning is R1A, single family residential district, one acre minimum lot size. Requested zoning is R1C, single family residential district, 15,000 square foot lot size. The 2030 master plan record, recommends low, low density residential, one to four dwellings per acre. The parcel size is 1.01 .01 acres. The location is on the east side of Valley Lane, approximately 900 feet north of Highway N, adjacent to the city of Cottleville, located in District Council District 3. Staff. All right, uh, this property is located just oh, not quite in the middle of this subdivision, right here at this location. Um, the R1A zoning was established in 1973 with the revised zoning order going into effect. Uh, at that time, the parcels owned to the middle of the lane, um, and then therefore they were one acre. Um, before that, 
a lot of these parcels were already divided. This is considered a subdivision, but they were divided when the agricultural zoning only required uh, 18,000 square feet. So there are quite a few lots that are already uh, divided. Uh, the zoning that they're looking for is R1C, which is what is located right across the street from them. Uh, these homes uh, were redeveloped, or the property was redeveloped. Several, two or three lots were, were made into one resubdivision with the R1C zoning, and new homes were built on those lots. This would be similar to that. Uh, they did. They do also have a preliminary plat. It is not ready for presentation tonight, but I will show it to you for, again, a concept plan of what they're proposing to do. <coughs> Their intent is to simply divide the lot uh, into two. Uh, the R1C, it's, it's actually just under 20,000 square feet for each lot, so which drops them down to the R1C, which is 15,000 square feet but they are only intending to divide it one time. And that's all they would be able to with the R1C zoning. They would not be able to, to go any lower um, or have more homes in their preliminary plat. Uh, this is uh, in the land use plan. It is called for to be a one to four units per acre. Uh, if we look at the surrounding properties, to the east is Cottleville. Uh, I believe it's called Brittany. Uh, I want to say Brittany Meadows or something. Cove. Okay. Brittany Cove. I Thank think. you, Brittany Twice. Cove. Uh, those lots go as low as 5,300 square feet. This would not be anywhere near that. It would just be approximately 19,000 and some square feet per lot. Uh, but it is. It does fit into the density of the area. This is the Central High School and middle school, I, I believe there's a middle school there too, I'm not sure, uh, right next to them. Um, but with this, staff is recommending approval of this rezoning. Any questions for staff? Do, do you know, are there any uh, easements of any kind that will restrict the placement of a building on the half that's currently vacant? Uh, the proposed new lot yes. would be 12B. There, There is uh, an issue that we are still working with on the preliminary plat um, and does need to be addressed. Uh, it, and they do have a water course. It runs along the uh, eastern and southern portion of the property. They would have a setback from that. But easements, uh, they would meet the, the current subdivision. They, they would have to file a resubdivision plat and they would have to meet the current setback, front building setback, so it would look as if it, it fit right into the subdivision. So other than water course, there's nothing that would restrict where the new home would, could be placed with? It, it would have a 25-foot setback bank. from the top of bank. Okay. With the private, with, the, with their lot going to the middle of the road, uh, does that still leave them if, if for whatever reason they were required to dedicate to that to some sort of public or would um, that still leave them the plenty of room of 15,000 plus? Yeah, I, I didn't explain that in detail to you. Um, I believe it was, uh, I'm not sure what year they bought this, but it, this is county right of way now. And oh, it the is county now. does maintain okay. the street. And that's what reduced this, uh, this subdivision originally from the one acre, I mean this lot from the one acre it's currently about 0.9 acres, so the right-of-way has already been purchased. Okay. Uh, okay. They do have their building line there set, and they do have to um, um, meet the new um, setbacks that would be required under the R1C zoning. Gotcha. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? <coughs> Seeing none, we'll ask the applicant to come forward. Please raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury. I do. 
do. Please state your name and address for the record. My name is Sydney Krupa, and I live at 1354 <coughs> Valley Lane, St. Charles, Missouri, 63304. Okay, go ahead. I, uh, not as quite prepared as the previous um, rezoning request. Uh, so what we're planning to do is subdivide uh, with Audrey Bryant. Uh, we plan to build a small, well, not small, medium-sized ranch to fit in with the um, houses that are already down on that street to kind of fit the subdivision feel. Uh, and so that's, and we're going to work with, obviously, we haven't gotten that far to work with the waterway to make sure that we're um, the correct feet away and all that. Okay. Any questions for the applicant? Do you know about approximately the size home? Uh, roughly 1,600, maybe a little bit smaller, um, a little bit smaller. Are there any, uh, in that development, any covenants or restrictions which place square footage or other architectural uh, restrictions on it? Not that I'm aware okay. of any other restrictions. There is no HOA for that neighborhood. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you. We will uh, now open the public hearing uh, for application RZ 19-06. Uh, Anyone wishing to speak, please come forward. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in these proceedings under the pains and penalties of perjury? Yes, I do. Please state your name and address for the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. My name is Arnie C. A. C. Dinoff, public advocate and resident, P.O. Box 1535, O'Fallon. And I'd like to say that I'm a proponent and uh, I would urge you to vote unanimously for the zoning change. This is acceptable and responsible land use. The density in this case is perfect since they're going well and above the minimum requirement of the 15,000 square foot. In this case, they're using 20,000 square foot lots, and I'm all about the uh, spreading out the density. So I would ask that you approve this. However, uh, once again, <coughs> is my standard saying to this commission, um, and it's probably gonna be on the site, preliminary site approval, but I would like to see a letter of review from the Cottleville Fire Protection District in terms of serviceability of fire hydrants located to these two new homes, a letter from the Francis Howell School District to see if they can accommodate any uh, additional students at the schools, which is right in the, their backyard, a letter from the Public Water District Number 2 to see about the portability of, or possibility of public water <coughs> service here, and a letter review from Ducka Creek Sanitary District for both the sanitary, uh, dis sanitary district, I'm sorry, sanitary sewer, and also the surface water protection issue, uh, which I understand this neighborhood floods at times, and I wanna make sure that by building these two uh, homes that it, there is some review either by county staff or by Ducka Creek. <coughs> thank you. Thank you, any questions for Mr. Dell? Mm. Seeing none, thank you. Anyone else wish to speak in this public hearing? Not seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Um, and we'll ask the applicant to come back. Anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? No. Thank you. <laughs> we'll now bring this back to the commission for consideration. Any comments, questions? Motion for approval. Uh, motion by Mr. Klinghammer, who's uh, second? Second. Mr. Kuhn, second. Ms. Sally, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Clary? Yes. Mr. Fromm? Yes. Mr. Kuhn? Yes. Mr. Klinghammer? Yes. I vote yes. Application passes. <clears throat> okay. Next on the agenda is a preliminary plat for the resubdivision of Lot 12 Valley Acres located at 1354 Valley Lane, the application is the number PRE 19-05. Owner developer is Daniel Lauders, Sydney Cupra, and Audrey Bryant. Property surveyors, Landmark Surveying Company. The existing zoning is R1A, single family residential district, one acre minimum lot size. Requested zoning is R1C, single family residential district, 15,000 square foot lot size. Proposed lots are two. 
Parcel size is 1.01 acres. The location is on the east side of Valley Lane, approximately 900 feet north of Highway Inn, adjacent to the city of Cottleville in Council District 3. And at the applicant's request, uh, we will uh, continue this application. Is that correct? Uh, yes, we would like you to table it until next month when okay. they have a chance to address our comments that we had. Okay. All those in favor of continuing this application until the July meeting? Sign aye. 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 Okay. This application is continued to the July meeting. Uh, that concludes our agenda for this evening. I think. Let me get back to that page. There's no table items. Um, next up is approval of the minutes for the May 15th, 2019 regular meeting. Chair will entertain a, entertain a motion to uh, approve Motion the for minutes. approval is submitted. Uh, is there a second? Second. There's a second. All in favor, sign aye. 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 Minutes have been approved. Other business is planning and zoning division updates. Mr. Meyer. I'd like to mention um, one thing, if I could. That has to do with um, flood inundation mapping. Obviously, uh, this year we've seen yet another flood. And um, I would say that our... Um, our staff, our technology, our, our coordination has been improving over the years and we're at the point now that uh, we're really using a lot more advanced technology to help us respond. And what I mean respond in terms of community development department is not an immediate response in terms of life safety um, specifically to help people you know, get out of the water. Um, but what I'm talking about is responding afterward in terms of structures um, and uh, inspections. So, uh, for example, um, as of last week, about 90,000 acres had been, it was inundated in St. Charles County. And how we know that and how we can um, calculate that is that we have better tools. Uh, we have uh, the Army Corps of Engineers is providing flood inundation mapping. And we're also doing our own assessments and mapping. And we're now at the point where we can show where the water is and has been recently, uh, and even the depth of water, uh, which is interesting. And so we're able to, with this depth of water, we're able to do an assessment of how many structures are we talking about that are probably likely flooded. And so um, the numbers that we are coming up with, I learned today that our inspectors are inspecting about uh, over 3,000 structures in unincorporated St. Charles County in West Dalton. And that includes ex accessory structures as well. Um, but we're doing an additional, what I'll call a windshield survey, to determine which structures are in which categories in terms of damage. And then we're following up with working specifically with property owners to get those structures back either repaired or if necessary, torn down or elevated as the case may be. In 1993, uh, the flood of 1993, as I understand it, in the unincorporated county, we had about over 1,400 homes that were in the path of water and not elevated. Today, we're down to about 280, maybe less than that. So I think this is a great success story um, in terms of floodplain management. In fact, I think it's a great success story because one, we're one quickly growing county here in the Midwest, one of the fastest growing in the Midwest, and yet uh, the people in the path of water is, uh, is, going, is going down. Uh, so um, again, I think our floodplain management program has been very successful, and thanks to people like Ellie Marr who work in it every day. Um, I thought I would share that with you because our, our flood inundation mapping is really getting to the point where it's very hopeful and honestly, it's, I think it's pretty impressive of how far we've come with that. Well, Robert, will we have any, I know you probably can't answer this now, any issues with buildings that have to be taken down that cannot be replaced because of current zoning requirements? because of zoning requirements. Um, 
I think what will factor into that more isn't just in terms of to what extent it's damaged. When people apply for building permits, and if it's more than 50% damaged, um, there, there would be a requirement that that house be elevated at least one foot above the base flood elevation, is what's called the base flood elevation. Sometimes they refer to that as the 100-year flood, but that's not quite accurate because it's technically just a, in any one year is a 1% chance of flooding to that, to that level. But I think it's more, not quite so much zoning it's gonna dictate it, but probably the, the level of flood damage uh, what I mean by that is the cost of repairs versus the value of the, the property. Any other questions of staff? Obviously, we're getting closer to the cleanup stage. Um, and then this is, is probably outside of your purview, but is the county talking about bringing in dumpsters or anything to help um, the people that are these 300 structures that, that have water soaked uh, personal effects, or are we gonna do anything to help uh, haul that stuff away? I haven't heard anything about dumpsters. Now that, that question, um, we could speak with uh, Building and Code Enforcement who deals more, more directly with it. Ellie, do you have any I, information? I know in 2008 uh, we did that, and I'm not sure, but I, it may have come from County Council. Okay. I, but I'll, I'd have to check with administration on that. I appreciate that. Thank also, you. Also, I might add just quickly, the last I've heard was there's a state declaration of emergency. The governor's declared emergency for St. Charles County and other counties, but there is not yet a federal declaration for a federal disaster. But once, once that declaration made uh, by the president, then that would allow FEMA to come in and provide certain assistance Then they can't do until there's the, that federal declaration. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Anything else to be brought towards before the commission? Seeing none, Chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. For a second? Second. All in favor, sign aye. 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 We're adjourned.